Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today. To always be in the prison of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the things right now. To give him all the praise right now. And to give him all the glory. Another day to magnify and shout out his holy name right now. Another day to put your faith and your trust and your hope in Jesus' hand right now. Another day for you continue to say, Jesus, I trust you. Even though I don't understand what's going on. I trust you. Even though I'm dirt, I'm hurting right now. I trust you. Even though I'm going through some pain right now. I trust you. Even though I'm going through some difficulties right now. I trust you. Even though I'm going through the worst of the worst of the storm right now. I trust you. You got to let them know that you trust them. You got to let them know that I'm not worried about anything. Because I know I'm going to be all right. You got to let them know right now that I know that you are, that you, that you have me in the best, the best of hands right now. You got to let them know that Jesus, no matter what I'm going through, but no matter what I'm facing, I'm always going to continue to seek you, praise you, glorify you, and always put you first place. Why? Because we serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a big God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. We serve a God who is too faithful to fail us. He is too faithful. That's why praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business and always will be in the blessing business. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. He is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, that you allow all my brothers and sisters to come together to fellowship under one roof, under one body of Christ. Father God, words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored we, we are, Father God, to be in your house, to be in your sanctuary right now, Father God, just glorify you. Oh, Father God, thank you for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today that's going to keep us full and satisfied. Oh, God, we know that you better show up and show out in this house right now. Oh, God, we know that you better deliver in your sanctuary right now. Oh, God, we know that you better move like you never moved before. Oh, God, we know that you better heal like you never healed before. Oh, God, we know that you better to deliver like you never delivered before. Oh, God, this is your house, Father God. This is your, your sanctuary, Father God, that you built on solid ground. There's nothing or anything that can move it or shake it right now. Oh, God, we just lift you up as we magnify and glorify your holy name right now today, Jesus, for how mighty, how awesome, how good you are, God, because we, we serve an awesome and mighty and powerful God. Oh, God, you know exactly what all your sons and your daughters, even myself, what we are going through right now. And God, we're still holding on for a miracle. We're still holding on for better days. We're still holding on, Father God, for our situation, our circumstances to turn around. And God, we still have hope because your word says as long as we have hope in you, as long as we have hope in you, there's no way, absolutely no way, that we can be disappointed. And God, we have hope right now, Jesus. God, I'm asking you tonight, Father God, to give us clarity tonight. Move through this place right now. Anoint this place right now. Allow your presence and your, your love to move through this place right now, God. God, I'm asking you to speak to one of your sons and your daughters right now. Oh, God, I'm asking you to lift them up right now, God. Oh, God, they need to hear from you right now, God. God, they need clarity right now today, Jesus. Oh, God, we ask you today for more wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Jesus, as we continue to seek you and praise you. And worship your holy name. Oh God, we just thank you. We trust you, Jesus. Heavenly Father God, you are welcome. You're invited right now today. In our homes right now. On your platform right now. Even on your YouTube channel right now. Father God, you are welcome right now to my brother's house. My brother's, my brother's life. 
my sister's home into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You're invited right now today into this sanctuary right now on Jesus' YouTube channel right now on this platform. Holy Spirit, you also, you are welcome. You're invited right now into my brother's home, into my brother's life, into my sister's home, into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us because you are a great comfort. You are a best friend. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you never moved before. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to allow all my brothers and sisters and every viewer, even people who are scrolling past this YouTube channel, I allow them to catch the Holy Ghost fire right then and there. Oh, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move like you never moved before. And God, we're so thankful, we're so grateful, we're so honored, we're so blessed, Father God, to be in your house today, to be in your sanctuary, Father God. And God, we are always going to continue to thank you and praise you in your holy, precious, mighty name. Let the church come together and say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. It's like praise is an everyday thing. Praying is an everyday thing. Repentance is also an everyday thing. Why? We all drop the ball each and every day. We all make mistakes. We all fall short of God's grace and mercy each and every day. Every last one of us today. That's why we depend on him. That's why we rely on him. That's why we need him. Because the word said we all going to fall short. He knows that we're going to fall short. It doesn't matter what sin you did. Sin is sin. No matter how big it is, how little it is. Sin is sin. So there's no need to try to hide it. There's no need to try to shake a corner. There's no need to try to scoop it up under the rug. He already saw what you done. He heard what you said, and he was aware of the situation. So if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, you can't keep it real and be honest with nobody. So I need my keep it real brothers and sisters right now to join me in repentance right now, if that's okay. Lord Jesus, I ask for you. To please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me for all, forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for the chance of a lifetime. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. You didn't have to do it, but you did anyway. And Father God, it's something that's always in my spirit about you. It's something that moves through my heart about you. It's something that stays in my mind about you, Jesus. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you, Jesus. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you. I can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm always praising you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I fell in love with you the way I did, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pray, that's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I can't get enough of you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. And if you read for God's word, let the church say amen. God spoke to me today to tell somebody something. I don't know who it is. It could just be for me. And what he told me, what he spoke to my spirit, what he spoke to my heart, he said, it's not funny no more. What that person did to you is not funny anymore. They are going through some difficult pain right now. 
They're going through some difficult suffering, suffering right now. And you are the only thing on their mind right now. They wish they never done you wrong. They wish they, they wish they never cut you the way they cut you. They wish they never deceived you the way they deceived you. They wish they never lied to you, betrayed you, cheated on you, dumped you, left you on the side of the road the way that they did you. They wish now. The same thing that make you laugh is making them cry. He said they're going through a rough spot right now. And he was to show you what they're going through right now. You'll feel sorry for them right now. But if you reach out to try to help them or save them, you will become a part of them. And you will be in that same situation, that same circumstances that they are in right now. They not happy no more. They don't got their team no more. They ain't got the posse that was behind them anymore. Everybody's looking at them now like that was your fault. We didn't tell you to do him like that. We didn't tell you to do her like that. We didn't tell you to leave your marital home. We didn't tell you to leave the best thing that ever happened to you. You listen to us. We knew what you had. But you, oh help me Jesus, they didn't know what they had. They thought because they had the A-team behind them and backing them up. They thought they had the right support behind them. They thought everything was good. But Jesus said, they ain't, ha they ain't happy, no. They ain't happy now. It ain't going as good as they thought it was going to go. He said, they're not happy anymore. There's no more laughter anymore. It's only pain right now. It's only sorrow right now. So you got to pay the price for the wrong that you've done to somebody. And right now they're paying the price. They're paying the ultimate price right now and it's tearing them up right now. It is cutting them up to pieces right now. They don't know what to do. They're all alone right now. Nobody there to help them. Nobody there to support them. Nobody there to be in their corner. And the only thing they can think about is you. Oh yes. They they didn't think about the pain they caused when they hurt you. They didn't think about the pain they caused when you had to go through you had to go through all the lonely nights in your house all alone, hurting and suffering and crying. See, they didn't think about it because they were too busy laughing at you. They were too busy hanging around with the wrong crowd, thinking that crowd had their back. And when that crowd left them, and that crowd showed them who they really was, they looked, they looked so dumbfounded, they're like, but y'all help me. Y'all the one told me to leave him. Y'all the one told me to leave her. Y'all the one told me to do this to him and her. And they told them, that's your problem. You should never listen to us. But God, what we said, you got your own mind. Why did you listen to us when you know that was the best thing that you ever had? We want to see what you're going to do. So the same way that you did them like that, what you think that you're going to do? Oh, help me, Jesus. What do you think that you're going to do to us? We got the best thing that happened to you. We was not there for you. So if we got the best thing that happened for you, and we, if we was never there for you, what would you do to us when you get another set of groups to tell you to leave us. You'll leave us too. So we got to beat you to the punch. And that's what they did. That's why they're not happy right now. That's why they're not laughing right now. To the same bunch of people. That was rooting for them. That was clapping for them. That tried to set you up. They have now turned their back. On them. And now they don't know what to do right now. They're all out of control right now. They're all confused right now. And they wondering if they was giving you a call right now, would you accept that call? They wonder right now. And they send you a text message to say, could we talk? They wonder when you receive that text message. They wonder when you respond back to them. They wonder when you meet them. Right now, their mind is wondering right now. It's going on and on and on. It's going in circles. 
Because right now they're thinking about the wrong they did to you. But see, they didn't think about the wrong they did when it all went down. They weren't thinking about the pain that was going to cause. They were not thinking about the suffering that you had to go through. It, it's not happy now. It's not funny now. Know what Jesus told me. The same thing that makes you laugh. It's going to be the same thing that makes you cry. Right now, they're crying the river right now. They're hollering right now. Because they didn't think it was going to be done to them. But see, when you get into this word, this word will tell you. What goes around, comes around. You reap what you sow. And you got to pay the price for the wrong you done. See, those people who you thought was down for you, they knew what you had. That's why they joined forces with you. That's why they did it. Because they didn't want you to be happy. They want you to be just like them. But see, you were not smart enough to catch on to it. You fell for the trap. You fell for the okie doke. Now, the joke's on you right now. It ain't funny no more, is it? You ain't laughing up a storm now, is it? You talk about that person. You laughed about that person. You set that person up. Thought that person was going to fail. You thought that person was never going to make it without you. So you formed the, the greatest weapon. You formed the greatest weapon. But see, the weapon that you formed, it didn't prosper. It failed you. The same arrow that you tried to shoot at him and her was that same arrow that came back and shot at you. Because the word tells us that in Isaiah 54 verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall not prosper. But Jesus can't stop the weapon from forming. But he does give us his word and his promise that it would not prosper at all. See, right now, it ain't prospering for him right now. That's why they ain't, things are not going good for him right now. Right now, they're in a state of shock right now because they never thought their friends, so-called friends, was going to turn on. They didn't think that their family was going to turn on. They didn't think the people, their 18 crew, that they was kicking away. The see, they didn't think they was going to turn on. So now they're starting to see who was really there for them. And now you are the only thing that's on their mind and that's grabbing them bananas right now because they know they don't mess up right now. It ain't funny anymore. That's what Jesus tells them. It ain't funny to them no more. They're going through it right now. They're going through it big time right now. How I know? I'm glad you asked me. Let's turn our Bible to Matthew 27. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. Matthew 27. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say, man. Let me hallelujah. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I betrayed innocent blood. Now he go to part right here that is not funny to him no more. He go to part right here, they realize they did wrong. He go to part right here, the price that they got to pay for the wrong they did. He go to part right now when Jesus said the same thing that made you laugh. It's the same thing that's making them cry. And Jesus said, you best believe they're crying right now. Jesus said, best believe they're going through something right now. Jesus said, best believe they're going through the worst of the worst of pain right now. Here we go. What is that to us? They replied, that's your responsibility. See how they flipped on? They flipped on Judas. The same one that betrayed the best thing that ever happened. So Judas all laughed. But it ain't, it ain't happy no more. Judas was all dancing up a storm because he thought the people that was with him had his back. But see, that Judas didn't realize they was going to turn on him. See, Judas didn't realize they only used him and played him at his own game. See, he didn't use this enough. See, that Judas who betrayed you 
is the one who know you personally. That Judas who stabbed you in the back is the one who know you personally. That Judas who the one that cheated on you but the one that was staying with you and sleeping with you. That Judas that cut you from head to toe is the one that you know for a long time. You know him, you know her. They know everything about you. See, a Judas is a person that you know personally. It's not like an acquaintance or someone that you just met a couple weeks ago or a month ago. It's somebody that you know personally because personally, they know you personally. They know your family like you know their family. Y'all was close. Y'all was tight. Y'all had a bond. That's what it's about. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. Do you see how the pain and the suffering that he had to go through? See, Judas had to pay the price for the wrong that he done. See, that Judas who done you the way that they done you, right now they are paying the price. They are paying the ultimate price for what they done to you. That's why I'm here today to tell you. It's not funny now. But why did you do me like this? It's the point I'm coming through, my Judas. Why did you do me the way that you did me? Why did you do it? Now you're paying the price for the wrong that you've done to me. We then forgave you. But you didn't have to do me like that when I was the only one there for you. Why did you do me like that when I was kept it real with you? Why did you do me like that when I was faithful to you? Why did you do me like that when I was loyal to you? Why did you do me like that when it should have been about, when it should have been about you and not? Why did you do me like that? Why did you do me like that? Why? It's what some of y'all are asking right now. But Jesus, don't worry about it. They're paying the ultimate price right now. They're going through it right now. They're suffering right now. They are hurting in ways right now that you don't even realize right now. And they are crying every single day because why? They're thinking about the wrong that they've done to you. And if you know that this word is for you, and Jesus is talking to you personally, give Jesus some thanks and praise and glory right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is Whippers.LT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep keep him lifted up. Always continue to praise him no matter what. Always continue to keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. You continue to trust him even though you don't understand what's going on right now. Don't you dare walk out of his life right now. Don't you dare give up on Jesus right now. Don't you dare let go of his unchangeable hands because Whatever it is that you're going through or facing right now, Jesus can turn your situation around. So that's why I'm encouraging you right now. Don't you dare let his hands go. You continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. You continue to trust him and praise and magnify his holy name. Continue. Continue to always pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.